This is Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be going over delegation. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be covering those main topics that you need to know about delegation for your nursing lecture exams and for the NCLEX exam. Then after I go over those topics we're going to practice some NCLEX style questions over delegation. And I'm going to walk you through how to break down those questions and how to answer them correctly. And then of course after you watch this video you can access the free quiz that will give you more practice questions on delegation. So let's get started. First, let's start out talking about what is delegation in nursing? It is where a licensed nurse, and we're talking about a registered nurse, transfers responsibility to a person who is competent to complete a task. So in nursing, we have registered nurses, and registered nurses can delegate to a licensed practical nurse, an LPN, or unlicensed assisted personnel, which is like the CNA, the nursing assistant. Now, why would a nurse, an RN, want to delegate other tasks to these people? Well, it helps free up the registered nurse to care for those more critical patients that like the LPN, the CNA can't really care for, and to complete other tasks that the other people on the nursing team, it's not within their scope of practice to complete like teaching, educating, assessing, planning patient care, and evaluating that patient care. That all falls to the registered nurse. However, not all tasks can be delegated by the registered nurse. Many times those tasks, the nurse, the registered nurse has to do it themselves. So delegation is really a skill if you're not working as a nurse yet, you're a new grad, it's something that you develop over time. And in order to be successful in nursing, you have to get delegation down to help provide good patient care. Now, there are several factors that determine whether a task can be delegated to these other people on the nursing team. So let's look at those factors. Okay, first you wanna ask yourself, this is how I remember it. Does this task that I'm delegating to this person require tape, okay? Tape, we're talking about T, teaching. Is this a task that's gonna, we're gonna have to teach this patient, educate them, that goes to only the registered nurse? A, is it an assessment, like one of those comprehensive assessments, or an admission assessment, that goes to the RN? Is it P, planning, are you planning the patient's care? The nursing diagnosis, those nursing interventions, having to draw that up, that falls to the RN. Or is it E, evaluating that patient care, evaluating the plan of care, how they're responding to these nursing interventions. Do we need to make another nursing diagnosis for this patient? So all that will fall to the RN that the RN really cannot delegate to the LPN, and especially the nursing assistant. Other factors include the state and facilities protocol. Every state in the United States is really different on what they allow the LPN and the nursing assistant to do. So whenever you do get your job as a registered nurse, you've got to review and look at that, ask your shift leader, your nurse manager, if you're never sure about if you're gonna delegate a task, what a person can do. Because for instance, let me just give you some examples. Um, in some states, LPNs can take a certification course and start IVs and give IV medications. So in other states, they can't do that. Another thing is that nursing assistants in some states can become certified to draw blood, obtain EKGs, or um, check blood glucose levels. However, in some they cannot. So you always want to look at that whenever you do practice. But for NCLEX, they're really gonna ask you those generalized type of uh, tasks that they can do. They don't really get into the nitty gritty, like how each state is different, because I think NCLEX knows that every state is different on what they allow each profession of nursing to do. Another thing that you wanna look at whenever you're delegating to help protect you to make sure that you're doing it right, which throws in the other factors, is the five rights of nursing delegation. And I would remember these five rights. The first right is right task. So as the registered nurse, can you actually delegate this task? So in other words, is this task within your scope of practice to delegate to an LPN or a nursing assistant? If not, is it only a task that you can do as an RN? So whenever you're looking at that task or trying to figure it out, you need to ask yourself, is this a low risk task that's gonna have 
low probability of problems that exist. For instance, there's not going to be any of this outside the box thinking that this person has to know in order to complete it. It's very straightforward. And of course, does this task require tape? And if it does, only the RN can do it. And remember, tape again was teaching, assessment, planning, or evaluating. The second right is right circumstance. And this depends on what is going on specifically with that patient and what is going on with that person that you are delegating the task to. So let's talk about the patient. So whenever you're looking at those test options on your exam, you wanna ask yourself, is this patient stable or are they unstable? And if the patient's unstable, you wanna take care of those tasks. You don't wanna be delegating those out to the LPN or to the nursing assistant. For instance, let's say that you have a patient who is has an active GI bleed, they are literally just throwing up blood everywhere, they're very hypotensive, their heart rate's tachycardic, you want to be the one to get those vital signs as a registered nurse. You don't want to delegate that out because your patient's unstable and you need to be there getting those vital signs. In addition, you want to look at that workload of the person that you are delegating that task to. Are they stretched thin? For instance, let's say you had a nursing assistant. You're, you normally have two on your unit, but one called in. Well, you don't wanna be delegating all these tasks to that nursing assistant because they have so much on their plate right now, so you're gonna to have to take over those tasks that normally that they would do. The third right is right person. And as a registered nurse, you wanna make sure that you're asking a person who has demonstrated competency in doing the specific task you're asking them. So do they have experience doing it? And you know, a lot of times you have to ask yourself, you know, they're an LPN, but have they had enough experience to do this task I'm asking them because just because it's within their scope of practice doesn't necessarily give you the ability to delegate that to them you have to make sure that they have competency in doing it and then of course you want to make sure it's actually within their scope of practice which is deemed by your state and facilities protocol for them to actually be able to do that task and the fourth right is right direction slash communication. And as a registered nurse, you want to make sure that you are explaining in a very clear, straightforward way how to perform this specific task that you're delegating and what this person should expect and report to you. And lastly, the last right is right supervision. And as the RN, you always want to follow up with evaluating and supervising how the task was completed. And in ensure it was completed properly. Don't forget about it because as the RN, you are still accountable for that task that you delegated, which leads me to my next point that I want you to remember. So as the RN, when you delegate a task to an LPN, a CNA, the accountability is not transferred to the person who is doing the task for you. So as the registered nurse, you are still accountable and responsible for that task getting done and getting done correctly. So you want to make sure you always go back behind them and make sure that it was done because you're still accountable for it. Another thing I want to talk about is delegation among the other with nursing assistants and LPNs. Now, whenever you delegate something to a nursing assistant, the unlicensed assistive personnel, they cannot go and redelegate that task to another person. They, unlicensed assistive personnel, do not have that ability to delegate. Now, for LPNs, it's a little bit different in some states. In some states, LPNs can delegate, in some states they can't. So again, always just look at your state and facility protocols. Now let's quickly look at the role of each of these disciplines and what they would do in most cases. Okay, first we're gonna talk about the unlicensed assistive personnel, and that's like your CNAs. Okay, they are supervised by the registered nurse, but they can't delegate tasks. Now, what do these people do? They do just the basic care. Even though it's basic care, it really helps us out as the registered nurse. So what do they do? They help the patient ambulate, turn, bathing. They calculate I's and O's, that intake and output, except for the IV that falls to the registered nurse. They perform mouth care, help the patient to the bathroom, linen changes, feeding, but if you have a patient who's aspirating or major risk of that as the nurse, registered nurse, you want to be the one assisting with that so you can watch for those signs and symptoms and 
look at what's happening and make critical judgments, say, hey, this patient's definitely aspirating, we probably wanna do a swallow study and get something else for this patient so they're not aspirating. They also collect vital signs on a stable patient, weights, they do not give any kind of medications. This includes creams or anything. That's either the LPN or the registered nurse. Now, whenever you're looking at test options, you don't want to delegate tasks to the nursing assistant when the patient is unstable. You need to do that yourself. So what's some examples? Well, say we have a scenario, the patient just had heart surgery, and when they have heart surgery, like open heart, we like to get them up and ambulate them, get them out of bed. Well, if the patient is literally just post-op day one from surgery, they need to get up and ambulate, we don't wanna delegate that to the nursing assistant. We wanna be the one who does that because that patient's at risk for having issues. They just had heart surgery. So that wouldn't be something we would want to delegate specifically to them. In addition, let's say that the patient just had a new ostomy, an ileostomy. We don't wanna delegate that task to the nursing assistant to be the one to change the bag, to look and calculate the output. We, the registered nurse, wants to be there looking at that stoma, looking at the skin around it. How much is that stoma putting out? We wanna be there to look at those results because the patient is post-op and they're at risk for having some potential outcomes that aren't predictable. Now let's look at the duties of the LPN. Okay, they are supervised by the RN and their duties depend on the state and the facilities protocols along with that LPN's training. And in some states, they can delegate to the unlicensed assistive personnel. Now let's look at the duties that they can do in most cases. Well, of course they can perform all these duties over here that your nursing assistant can do. And whenever you're assigning patient assignments out, because a lot of questions like to ask you that, you want to pick the patient that is the most stable. So it's predictable what's gonna happen with them. And they have like a chronic case, it's not something acute that can rapidly change. Like for instance, let's say Guillain-Barre syndrome. That syndrome can change rapidly. Patient can have paralysis where they can't breathe. So we wouldn't want to assign an LPN to a patient who has that and you don't want to assign them new admissions because the RN needs to do that comprehensive admission assessment, gathering all that important information for their health history. Also, you wouldn't want to assign them a patient who is going to be discharged. They need a lot of discharge education because that's the role of the registered nurse and they're unstable. You wouldn't want to assign a patient that, of course, or if they're like fresh post-op. Now, if they're like days five, six, seven, patient, we're getting a feel for them, they're predictable, they're out of that dangerous period of being post-op. So the LPN, what they do is they help us gather data to contribute to our assessment so they can listen to heart sounds, lung sounds, and bowel sounds and report that to the registered nurse who can interpret those findings, listen to those findings if the LPN has found anything abnormal. But the RN is the one who completes that comprehensive assessment. So if you see an assessment option, that is for the RN, not the LPN. Also, the LPN does not interpret data. They only collect it and they report it to the RN. So the RN, if the LPN tells the RN heard crackles, the RN will interpret that, listen, possibly thinking we got fluid overload. They can look at those lab results and interpret that, report that to the physician. The LPN does routine procedures that, again, have that predictable outcome, doesn't require that critical thinking or dealing with something unexpected. They can do things like obtaining an EKG, doing glucose checks, inserting Foley, Foley catheters, wound care, ostomy care. They can assist with implementing the nursing interventions on the care plan, but they don't develop the care plan or those nursing interventions the registered nurse does. They can give medications except for those IV medications and they don't give blood products like a blood transfusion, platelets, TPN, or other things like that. So just to recap, you wouldn't want to delegate anything to the RN that requires educating the patient, planning out patient care, like doing the care plan, developing that nursing diagnosis, the interventions, 
or evaluating the care plan, seeing if the patient is meeting that, or anything that deals with assessment. Now let's talk about the RN. Okay, the RN delegates to the LPN and the unlicensed assisted personnel, which we just seen. Now when they delegate, do they transfer their accountability? to that person for that task? No, they maintain that. So they are accountable for that delegated task getting done and being done correctly. They can do all the duties of the LPN and the nursing assistant. Some of their duties include whenever you are assigning assignments to an RN, you would want to give them the most critical complex patient that is on the unit, the new admissions, the fresh post-op, and the patients who need a lot of discharge teaching. So it's like the flip, what you wouldn't want to assign to the LPN is what you would want to assign to the RN. So be thinking about that when you're looking at those test options. They complete the comprehensive assessment, that admission assessment. They can give all medications, IV, chemo, blood transfusion, all of it. They um, do the invasive procedures, like they mess with the central lines, they can remove those, they access sub-Q ports, and they assist the MD at bedside with those invasive procedures. They develop that nursing care plan, the nursing diagnosis, the interventions, they evaluate that, update the care plan, because this requires critical thinking to interpret those patient findings they found during the assessment, the labs going on. The RN is gonna look at all that data interpret that and formulate what that patient needs nursing wise based on those findings. That's the role of the RN. They're going to collaborate with other members of the healthcare team to help that patient get better, continue with care. And again, as the RN, what do you never want to delegate to the LPN or unlicensed assistive personnel for testing purposes and in the real world? Never delegate unstable, complex patients and don't delegate a task that requires tape. Teaching, assessment, planning, and evaluation. Now let's look at some NCLEX style questions. Okay, our first question says, as the RN, you are making the patient assignments for the next shift. Which patient would you assign to the LPN? A, a 68-year-old male patient experiencing atrial fibrillation and is receiving a deltiazem drip. B, a 25-year-old female patient newly admitted with diabetic ketoacidosis. C, an 85-year-old female patient with Alzheimer's disease who has a colostomy and scheduled two feedings, or D, a 45-year-old male patient who is ordered to receive two units of packed red blood cells. Okay, so let's look at our options. Okay, the question wants to know which task are we gonna delegate to the LPN for these patient assignments? So we want to, number one, pick a patient who's stable. We don't wanna pick someone who's unstable. We wanna look at what's going on with that patient. Are they gonna be receiving certain medications? certain treatments because remember the LPN does those standard procedures not those invasive procedures so let's look at our options okay a patient 68 years old they're in AFib and they're on a deltaism drip patient doesn't sound stable do they they're in atrial fibrillation which is a dysrhythmia cardiac dysrhythmia and they're on a drip, which means they're getting IV cardizem, deltaizem. And that drip, if you've ever worked with it, you have to titrate the drip based on the doctor's parameters to keep that heart rate within a certain parameter. So we wouldn't want to delegate that or give that patient to the LPN. That would We want to give that to an RN. Okay, B, 25-year-old patient newly admitted with uh, DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis. Okay, there's some things that really make some flags go off in this um, statement. Number one, they're newly admitted. We know that the RN really needs to take those new admission cases because they're just newly admitted. We really don't know what's going on with them. They can be unpredictable. We wanna give the LPN someone who's been there for a while, they're chronic and they're predictable and we can make sure we know what's going on. So that's one big key but what they're admitted with is another one, diabetic ketoacidosis. So that requires you to pull back from your memory bank of that condition. That's where they can have really high blood sugars and think to the treatment of that. They're gonna be usually a lot of times on an IV insulin drip and you have to titrate that drip. That's um, complex critical care, so you would want to assign that to an LPN, I mean to an RN, not an LPN. So mark that out. Okay, option C, 
85 year old patient with Alzheimer's disease, they have a colostomy and tube feedings. Okay, what's going on with this patient? Are they stable, unstable? They're stable. They have Alzheimer's disease, which is a chronic case. Now, one thing that may throw someone off is the colostomy or the tube feedings. That is within the scope of practice of an LPM. They can provide ostomy care and they can administer tube feedings. Those are standard routine procedures that an LPN can do. So that is our answer. But let's see why D isn't our answer, which most of you probably know. Um, 45 year old who needs two units of packed red blood cells. Patient needs blood, so that is best assigned to the RN because LPNs do not administer blood or blood products. So that would be X out and our answer is C. Next question says, as a registered nurse, which tasks below can you delegate to the experienced LPM? A, performing an assessment on a new admission. B, collecting a urine sample from an indwelling Foley catheter. C, developing a plan of care for a patient who is admitted with Guillain-Barre syndrome. D, educating a patient about how to monitor for side effects associated with warfarin, which is also Coumadin. E, auscultating lung and bowel sounds. F, evaluating a patient's understanding on how to administer subcutaneous injections of anoxaparin sodium, which is Lovenox, or G, administering an influenza vaccine. Now this question wants to know, out of all these tasks, which task can the RN delegate to the LPN? So it's one of those lovely select all that apply. And remember what I said at the beginning of the lecture. As the RN, don't delegate a task that requires tape. So what was tape again? Tape was teaching, A, assessing, P, planning, and then E, for evaluating. So. Don't want to do that. So we look for options like that and we eliminate. It makes our life a lot easier. And then of course, um, something that a invasive procedure, we wouldn't want to delegate that or something like that. So let's look at our options. Okay, A, admission assessment. Nope, not going to delegate that. Number one, it's an admission assessment, so they need that comprehensive assessment. That's what the RN is going to do. Now the LPN can um, listen to like heart, lung, bowel sounds, report that to the RN, what they heard, and help gather data, but the RN is responsible for the admission assessment. So no. Okay, B, collecting a urine sample from a Foley catheter. Absolutely, they can do this. They can collect samples. So that would be that because that's one of those straightforward routine procedures we do. Okay, C, developing a plan of care for a patient with Guillain-Barre syndrome. No, that again falls back to our little mnemonic, developing, planning. They don't, the nurse, the registered nurse develops the plan of care for patients. So it's nursing diagnosis interventions, but the LPN can help with implementing those. So we're gonna mark that out. E for educating, um, or D, sorry, educating about side effects of warfarin, the Coumadin. No, that's educating, falls back to our T for teaching. So the nurse would, the RN would be responsible for that, not the LPM. E for auscultating the lung and bowel sounds. Yes, the LPN can do that and report to the RN what they found. So you can delegate that. F for evaluating patient administering sub-Q injections of Lovenox. That is again another teaching aspect of patient care. The registered nurse is responsible to that for that. So that would be no. And then G, administering a flu vaccine. Yes, an LPN can be delegated to administer a vaccine, so they could definitely do that. It's just really IV medications, blood products, things like that, that they cannot do. So our answers are B, E, and G. Next question says, on your unit, there are two RNs. One is a new RN and the other is an experienced RN. In addition, there are three LPNs and two nursing assistants. Which task delegated to one of the nursing assistants by the new RN needs to be reevaluated? A, apply hydrocortisone cream to eczema on skin after giving the patient a bath. B, assist the patient with administering a flea enema. C, emptying an ostomy bag. 
Or D, collecting and recording a patient's blood pressure, heart rate, temperature, oxygen saturation, respirations, and pain rating. So this question wants to know which task delegated by that new RN to that nursing assistant needs to be reevaluated. They shouldn't have delegated those tasks to that nursing assistant because the nursing assistant isn't allowed to do it. So let's look at our options. Okay, A, apply hydrocortisone cream to eczema on skin after bath. Well, we know nursing assistants can give baths, but what they want the nursing assistant to do after the bath is questionable. Um, hydrocortisone cream, that is a medication. So you just can't hand the nursing assistant the cream and say, you know, after you give a bath, just put that cream on those red scaly areas. That would require that the nursing assistant administers that medication, which they are not allowed to administer medications. That would be something the LPN or the RN would do. So this is something that definitely needs to be reevaluated. So that's one of our answers. B, assist the patient with administering a flea enema. This is something that a nursing assistant does not do. This is where you would instill some fluids into the rectum to help relieve constipation, whatever's going on with the patient. That would be something that you would want to delegate to an LPN or do yourself. That's not something you can delegate to the nursing assistant. Remember, they do basic care, basic tasks. So that would definitely be something that needs to be reevaluated. C, emptying an ostomy bag. Yes, they can do this. This is just basic, um, helping with elimination, toileting, a, draining that bag with the stool or whatever type of ostomy they have. It could be ureostomy, which is, has urine. They just empty that. Same concept of if a patient's in diapers or has a pad on them, helping them change that. So yes, they could do that. So that's not one of our answers. And then D, Collecting and recording patients' blood pressure, heart rate, respirations, oxygen saturation, temperature, and pain rating. Always just make sure you look at everything that you're asking them to collect and record, and that all falls into what a nursing assistant can do. So that is not an answer. So what needs to be re-evaluated is options. A and B. Okay, so that wraps up this review over delegation. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to take the free quiz and to subscribe to our channel for more videos.